joining me on Ladies in Tech. This video is going to be on counters. There are two types of counters, a CTU up counter and a CTD, which is a down counter. Counters are retentative. A reset instruction is used to reset the counter to zero, uh, reset the accumulated value to zero. The counter instruction block consists of a counter address, and we got the counter address, a preset value, so predetermined by the operator or by the programmer, the preset value, and you have your cumulative count, which can be any number from 0 to 32,767. The counter address for a Micrologix is C for the file type, 5 for the file number, and the counter number is, is selected. Okay. Be Beside demonstrates how a counter work. A counter must retain or must value must remain in the range of negative thirty two thousand seven hundred and sixty eight and thirty two thousand seven hundred and sixty seven. If the count goes above the thirty two thousand seven hundred and sixty seven, the counter status bit OV is set to one. If the counter goes below negative thirty two thousand seven hundred and sixty eight, the counter status value for the underflow bit is set to 1. Counter instructions use the following parameters. This is the, uh, the counter is the address of the counter within the data file. All counters are three word data elements. Word 0 contains the control and status bits. Word 1 contains the preset and word 2 contains the accumulated value. The preset value, when the accumulator reaches the preset value, the done bit is set to 1. Preset data range is from negative 32,768 and 32,767. The accumulated value contains the current count. The accumulated data range is from the same as the other 32,000. So with bit 12, the OV bit, which is overflow indicator, the accumulated value wraps from positive 32,766 to negative 32,768 and continues to count up. A reset instruction with the same address as the CTU instruction is needed to reset it. So if that OV comes on, it's never going to shut off unless you actually reset the counter. And we're going to show you how to do that when we get into the programming. The done indicator is when the accumulated value is equal to or greater than the preset value. So the only way to have that bit below is if the accumulated value is less than the preset value or a reset instruction is used to reset that counter. Bit 15, which is a CU, the count up bit, this is true whenever the rung status is true and it goes false whenever the wrong status is, fault, is false. And also too, if at the same time, uh, if the reset instruction is true, it would also be false. With the CTD counter, so your countdown or counter, the bit 11, the UN bit, is um, high. It's set high when the value uh, is between negative 32,700, 768 and positive 70, 32,767 and continues to count down. A reset instruction is needed in order to set that bit low again because it is retentative. The done bit for this type of counter for a countdown counter is true when the cumulative value is greater than or equal to the preset value and in order to go uh, low again, the accumulated value has to be less than the preset value or the reset instruction with the same address as a CTU is enabled. Bit 14 is um, your countdown enable and this bit 14 for the CD is true every time the wrong status is true. And how to make that go false to go back to a zero state is that the wrong state has gone false or reset instruction is used. 
The cumulative value is incremented on the CTU or decremented on the CTD on a false to true wrong transition. So whatever the logic is in front of that uh, counter has to go true to false in order to count one up. So if this just stayed true the whole time, it wouldn't just keep counting like a timer would. You have to see that false transition happen. The accumulated value is retained when the run condition again becomes false and when the power is cycled in the controller. So that accumulated value will be retained in that counter. The counter continues to count when the accumulated is greater than the preset and when the accumulator is less than the uh, preset in the CTD. If the signal is coming from a field device wire to an input on the controller, the on and off duration of the incoming signal, signal must not be less than twice the controller scan, assuming 50% of the cycle. This condition is needed to enable the counter to detect a false to true transition from the incoming device. So you want to keep that in mind if you have something that you're trying to count that's very, very fast. This counter may not be able to do that for you. So just something to keep back in your mind there. Okay, so that's the uh, theory behind counters. So make sure you uh, sign up so you can watch the next video where we're actually going to use the counters within um, RS Logix 500. And I'm going to show you how they work there with each of their bits and what to turn on. So the next one we're going to look at is going to be our count up timer. So once again, make sure you sign up so you don't miss out on those tutorials. Thank you.